So, I'll meet you guys. Apparently, it's just right here. Which we've been here before, haven't we? We're gonna park right here. Oh, I need to go to the other side. Oops. Oh, that makes more sense. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? What? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? Huh? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tiernan. Oh. He's a pin setter. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. Stuck in my mind. She was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. Oh, come on, you're running already? Tiernan, LAPD! Man, this is never good when they do this crud. Come on, we're doing a car chase again. I feel like all these homicide cases have been the same. There! Oh, free. That thing looks fancy. What are you waiting for? Get after him! We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Oh, is that a fat jerk? These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tire. Ooh, that was close. Another runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means, fellas. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. If this isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. He knocked me off the road. That's... He's going through the square. I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. Right? This car's pretty impressive. they run because someone's setting them up? Because they feel like the deck is stacked against them. I don't make up ridiculous stories for them, detective. Leave that to the person's imagination. Are we going to the train? That's the end of that. About fucking time. What the heck? Put your hands where I can see them. Why would you do this to yourself, dude? Oh, let's get our car for real back to the station. You drive. That's important to, to have that guy there. So now we have three people. Fine. Where at are we headed? Home base or at the station. Dang it, the game up the would be nice to us this time. Captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Uh oh. So both R and I and the corners here. I got a bad feeling about it. Oh, technical service, not R and I. Don't mind me. Is that the advice guy? I survived the war for this. Why well, can't I get in the locker room? I'm not looking for. Uh. Can you look it up? What the? Armory, armory. 
this is the only room we can go to. Oh, I'm so confused all of a sudden. Oh. <laughs> I'm dumb. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Moller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycat. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Charlson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know? Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said to cunt BD. Oh, crap. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, though. You're married. Yours is Morgan. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And follow up on Evelyn Summers. I want daily reports. I mean, we've been solving things daily, so I doubt that's going to be an issue. Alright. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address from McCaffrey who will have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. I'm telling you, That's important. Stand. Okay. So let's go find an address for McCaffrey. Operator, give me dispatch. I feel like that's one thing we are missing at this point. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Yale Street between Ord and Alpine. Thanks, ma'am. All right. Maybe we have something? Hopefully at this point. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? Apparently we have to go back here eventually. Let me pose a question. Depends. What's it got to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slammer ever found out. Oh. Well, that's not a good sign. I don't like that at all. Is that a pigeon coop? Oh wait, I need to go back. I need to figure out what I don't even know what apartment this is. Six. Cool. McCaffrey is in apartment six. Let's see. Six sounds like a big number. So we'll go upstairs. Man, I'm good at this. Okay. Is that? Oh, freak. Torn from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. Wait. Oh, ha, ha, ha. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. 
He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Hmm. Surely we can ride him up to that. A citation, at least. Hey, isn't that the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? Yeah. I've done everything, man. You know this? <laughs> Grosvenor McCaffrey. Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Sit United down and we'll talk. I'll go get our wheels. Seriously. Just give up. I mean, you're not going to outrun a former Marine. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight. Where's freaking... Is he just now getting the car? Holy cow, run. This is the most boring chase ever. Nothing's happening. Give it up, LAPD! Oh, we can't use that faster out of nowhere. There we go. There he is. Uh, McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. <sighs> we need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's got to be the captain. I mean, unless Taranen set him up. I don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? Ah, uh, whoever did it, it sure wasn't that Dahlia fuck. How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. I want to see the list. That's what I want to see, that 200 list. All right. You sure you can make it stick for one of these suspects, Jeffy? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan isn't one, McCaffrey isn't two. I want the confession from one of them. You know, we have not got a Don't single me, confession yet. All right, we have to go to one first, because one makes more sense. Once before two, we're going to interview James. Hello, good sir. Why did you run? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Okay, tell me about the victim. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Shenanigans. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? Well, the victim last seen plus the old lady said something about her. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night, we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. And? I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. I don't think... Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. Uh... We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute. But 
No, I'm, I'm not so sure. All right, Alibi. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. No. Why You're are you lying, lying? Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and... I'm not lying. She got up and left. That was it. But what about the liquor purchase? She left, but she came back. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. She told the liquor store owner, you're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. She would never stop talking about McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Oh. Dang, she's 16 years old. Do you now. own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? Well, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. I mean, you're not wrong, but... Coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. Nah. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. Uh, a big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. Huh. It was made from an old typewriter key, present from the prop department at her old movie studio. That's kind of cool. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. All right. McCaffrey. Let's see what you got for me. I got some goddamn. You ready to answer some questions? Do you think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Your Alba. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. But one problem. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? We're going to talk about the letter. How about half of Augusta Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. Wait, what? So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. How do you have access to a tire iron? We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? I mean, yes. I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Well, the accusation from Tiernan, except this is going to be kind of funny. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. So we can't accuse him in here. Or McCaffrey. 
Wait, did he just walk out? Operator, message for KGPL. What do you do now? <laughs> Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, detective. That's a change of voice. Thank you. All right. This is what's fun about this case, because you have to do this over and over again. So, hi, James. I'm back. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go. It's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. What happened beforehand? So Evelyn passed out. And you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning. Very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. You know something. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Well, McCaffrey just said you he needed help. You needed help. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning, and he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box. And he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn. And that it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. And I don't know, Detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. Was it me? Dude, I think you're being set up. Wait here. I think McCaffrey's setting you up. Welcome back. Military service. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw, it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Wrong. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? You are kicked out of the military for beating a woman. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! Oh, she tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country i could have you beat her because she stole from you because she tried to outsmart you the ignorant audacity of the bitch what is a man supposed to do sit there and take it how is a man supposed to call himself a man and evelyn summers a poor drunken nobody stole your book and she got what was coming to her to me that's enough governor mccaffrey i'm charging you with the murder of evelyn summers she was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grab. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse, and neither will the grand jury. 
You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. Hmm. Still. Okay, there goes confirmation. Perfect. Can't go wrong with that. But next time on L.A. Noir, we'll see if that's actually the end of it. We'll see you then.